Today we're going to be looking at the remesh modifier and all of its functionality, after which we're going to look at some practical uses of how you can use this remesh modifier in design. So let's go ahead and add a remesh modifier right there. And you can see it's all sorts of messed up. What this is doing is it's trying to take this and make it into quads or cubes depending on the mode. So right here we have the block mode, which looks a lot like Minecraft. It just changes it all into cubes. Smooth, you can see how it's evenly spaced quads across the whole thing and it's taking all the extreme points and smoothing those down. And then sharp tries its best, even though it looks like crud, to get those sharp edges along the top of the eyebrows and those sides. If you increase the depth right here, you can see that the sharp edges are being preserved on the eyebrows and on the head right there. If you change this to smooth, you can see that it tries to smooth and balance out in between all these different things. The scale will increase or decrease the size of the quads on this. Let's go ahead and apply this and see what this looks like. You can see that all these quads are trying to be evenly spaced, um, but where it's really thin, you start to lose some geometry. So like on those ears, if I change the scale down, you can see that the ears get even smaller and smaller as the quads get bigger and bigger because that thinness is no longer going to be supported by the algorithm. And so it just chops it off. Same thing if I change the Octotree depth. If I push this down, you can see, oh, sorry, that's up. If I push this down, you can see that I start to lose the ears because they're too thin. You will lose thin geometry and it'll keep the thick stuff. If you don't want to lose it, or at least not lose a lot of it, you can toggle off the remove disconnected pieces. So right there, that's what's considered the disconnected piece. You'll still lose the very thinnest parts, but it will preserve that. So you can kind of play around with that as you need. Now, when is this actually useful? Well, let me show you. If I want to displace something, so for example, if I want to displace this so that there's rocks and stones actually coming off this tower, these long quads are very bad for displacement. So if I texture this and have a displacement map, these things will not displace at all. You want to split up and divide it into small quads. What will end up happening is wherever there's small quads already, we'll get most of the detail, and the large ones, for example, right here, and the large ones will not get the detail. So using the remesh modifier, I'm gonna go and I'm just gonna dice this up into nice even quads. Let's go ahead and do that. So add remesh modifier. And you can see it's all sorts of messed up. So let's change the octo tree depth to six, seven, and it looks pretty good right there. If we, yeah, let's go ahead and try a smooth. That looks good, but I don't want rounded stones on the top. If I do blocks, that's absolutely not what I want. And so let's go smooth, or excuse me, sharp, and let's apply this. Now as I tab in, you can see that more or less the quads are evenly spaced. So as I dis uh, displace this, it's going to look really, really good. I've gone ahead and created a model. It reminds me of those cooking shows where they just pull out the meal from the oven. I've created a model already displaced here. And so using the remeshed, I took this into Substance Designer, textured this, export the displacement map, and then I applied it by, let me go ahead and show you that. I added a displacement modifier. I need to select it here. We go. What the? Okay. I have a displacement modifier and it has a texture on the UV. And then I just subdivide this up so that the lower geometry is able to actually subdivide. Now, when would I actually use this? If I needed really, really detailed models in a game, I can go ahead and do this, bake this out, and then decimate this. And you'll actually have like geometry of stones and rocks and things like that. So it's very useful. And I've used it while creating different models for different games. Let's go ahead and look at what it looks like if we did not remesh it. You can see the difference, right? Where the quads were small, you're getting most of the detail. But where the quads were large and long, it's, it's having a really hard time trying to remesh this because as I subdivide this, you get less geometry there. Also, there's subdivision stuff going on, so it's just, just overall just looks really bad. So if you ever find yourself needing to create a displacement map for something that is not just a flat plane, the remesh modifier is one of your best friends because you can remesh it down, get some nice quads, take it into Substance Designer or your favorite texturing software, get a texture and a height map, bring it back into the blender. You can go ahead and displace that, decimate it down, reapply the texture. And so you have a low poly um, mesh that actually has some depth to it and it's not just a normal map. 
I use this in stonework most of the time, but there's a lot of different uses. You can use it in on wood textures and things of that nature as well. And that's it for the tutorial. Hope you liked it. I think these tutorials are awesome. We try and get straight to the point, not waste your time. I also appreciate all the comments. I learn a lot from my own community, so I appreciate that a ton. Please consider to follow and subscribe to us. Also check out some of our other tutorials. There's some fun ones. I do ZBrush tutorials. I do Substance Designer, Unity. And we also do some video game reviews of indie games. These are games that aren't well known and don't get a lot of publicity. And so we're trying to get the word out so people can see that there's a lot of other good games out there as well. Awesome. Have a great day and I'll see you guys around. Bye.